Linkin Park are back and with a brand new female vocalist. Oh my God! Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay but since their first live performance in the past seven years, the band is under a lot of fire as a result of the new lead singer's controversial past and beliefs. Fans are calling for her to quit and she actually might, but let's unpack everything that's happened to the band in the last three weeks first. It's not new news that Linkin Park has been looking for a new vocalist for quite some time now, and big names like Bonnie Fraser of Stand Atlantic and even Amy Lee of Evanescence have been rumored being two of the many considered vocalists. I was personally rooting for Bonnie because I really liked her vocals in Bleed It Out with Mike in the Already Over sessions. Her vocals were actually unreal, and I'll link it down below. It's been a complete mystery to us fans for years who they're going to pick as the new vocalist. But as a veteran Linkin Park fan since 2002, I was super excited to see this new chapter in the band's career. And I'm also really happy that they are still wanted to create music together. On Wednesday, the 28th of August, the band posted a super mysterious and cryptic 100 hour countdown timer on their X account. When the timer got to zero, there were lots of glitches before the timer began to count back up with a lot of hints at the number patterns of nine and five. I thought this was super cool and I was basically frothing at the mouth. My mind and body were ready. So then the next day on Thursday, the band teased on their ex that something in fact would be happening with a crop picture of their band logo, including be part of something September 5th, LincolnPark.com. After this announcement, some fans started posting online emails they'd received from the Linkin Park Underground fan club with an access code for an event included with NDA contracts to sign for an event being held September 5th in Los Angeles. It was like Christmas had come early, boys. I was bouncing off the walls. I was super excited and I was just hoping this was going to be the announcement of the new lead singer. And although at this point, Bonnie had already put up a video saying that she wasn't the new lead singer, I was still holding out and hoping that she was just being theatrical. The concert started at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and that's like 11 p.m. Eastern European time for me. And I was underwhelmed to say the least uh, at the performance. If anyone knows me, they know I love music and I play a lot of instruments and I pride myself on my good ear for key and pitch. If you ask any musician who has a perfect pitch, they'll tell you themselves that it's a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing when it comes to picking up songs and it's a curse when it comes to questionable song covers. And I'm not saying this new lead singer has a bad voice before you come for me. I'm also not saying that she can't sing, but she couldn't do any of Chester's songs and she was extremely flat. And for me, it sounded like mediocre karaoke the entire performance. If we compare the new singer's performance to that of, for example, Bonnie Fraser's cover of Bleed It Out, Bonnie might have a completely different voice to Chester, but she's singing in the correct key and she hits all the notes correctly. Again, link to her performance down below. And I understand it was the woman's first performance and she was probably wrecked with nerves and super anxious on stage. So I'll put it down to that for now. But who is this new girl, Emily Armstrong? And why have I never heard about her before September 5th? And honestly, it's kind of all gone downhill for her since then. Born and raised in Los Angeles, Emily was best known as the lead vocalist of the band Dead Sarah, with 575k average monthly listeners on Spotify. Since the first performance of Linkin Park, many controversies about the singer have been brought to light and the Linkin Park fans are less than impressed. Armstrong is accused of having associations with the notorious Church of Scientology, having reportedly attended the church's 44th anniversary in 2013. With Mars Volta band members Cedric Boxler Zavala and his wife Chrissy both labeling Armstrong as a hardcore Scientologist. Both former members of the church themselves, however, both have since left after Chrissy accused actor and convicted rapist Danny Masterson of actual assault and is currently pursuing legal civil action against him. Armstrong was apparently close friends with Masterson and even defended him in court during his trial of the rape of two women and then chased one of his victims out of the courthouse as an intimidation tactic. This just doesn't sit right with me at all. Do you know who else was an actual assault victim? Chester Bennington. Do you think Chester would have agreed with this? Who hired this girl? Seriously, like. 
Armstrong has since taken to social media to defend herself as a result of all the backlash and claims she is no longer in contact with Madison after the court verdict and to clear the air, as she said in her own words. She denies any connection with Madison and claims that all violence against women is wrong. But intimidating them is fine. However, I will say in that entire post that she put up in all the accusations that she was accused of, she didn't once not say that she's not a member of the Church of Scientology, which is one of the biggest accusations she's facing right now. So why wouldn't she not address it unless she was a member? A lot of fans are really upset and disappointed with the guys in Linkin Park because how could they hire someone who doesn't believe in psychology and mental illness to replace someone who passed away as a result of struggling with mental illness and sing songs about struggling with mental illness. Make it make sense, seriously. Even Chester's own son, Jamie Bennington, is speaking out against the band's decisions and says that it's super disrespectful and he does not approve of Armstrong singing his father's songs. Which makes perfect sense because if she doesn't believe in mental health and she doesn't believe in mental illnesses, then why would she be singing about them? Jamie shared a screenshot of his Discord conversation with Linkin Park's Mike Shinoda, who was defending Armstrong with, Many people will take time to wrap their heads around us with her. If people are respectfully not there yet, I'm totally fine with that. But disrespect me and you will lose my respect in return. I understand this. We need to give space for everyone who is shocked processing. It is difficult. Seeing me and M together, shoulder to shoulder, brought up so many feelings for people in our crew and management. Happy and sad at the same time. So complex. To which Jamie responded, People aren't having a difficult time wrapping their head around the prospect of Linkin Park reinventing itself. They are having a hard time wrapping their head around how you hired your friend of many years to replace Chester, knowing Ellie's history in the church and her history as an ally to Danny Masterson is what it is. You quietly erased my father's life and legacy in real time, not only during a band interview meant to clear the air about certain aspects of Linkin Park's history and future, but during International Suicide Prevention Month. I'd mention you, brackets, Mike Shinoda, but you restricted my interactions with you because you don't like what I have to say. So this will have to do. Honestly, pop off, Jamie, pop off. Nobody could have said it better than that. Nail on the head, man, nail on the head. Jamie is right. It does feel tone deaf to hire someone like this who Chester would have never chosen as his replacement. There were so many people that could have been chosen. So many better and kinder and less controversial individuals like how did they pick her? But I do honestly feel for Mike and the band in other ways because this must be a very difficult situation to navigate and a lot of fans have taken to social media and have written posts and have posted videos saying stuff like the only person that could replace Chester is Evo Rosario. And if you don't know who Evo Rosario is, he's the lead singer of a Portuguese Linkin Park cover band and they're actually really, really, really good. And his voice is scarily close to Chester's. His vocals, his screams, it's actually crazy how close they are. I've attached the link below to their cover of Given Up. And let me tell you, Miss Armstrong has a long way to go until she can perfect that scream like Evo has. But in all seriousness, I don't think Linkin Park would hire someone like Evo and Charlie or Moist Critical said it best in his video on the matter. Honestly, it would probably be too weird and honestly super heartbreaking for the band to try and bring in a carbon copy of Chester's voice. Because just try to see it from their point of view. Imagine losing your best friend, someone that you've worked with for 20 years, someone that you're super close with. You're not going to go out and find their carbon copy and be like, you're my best friend now, I needed a replacement. It'll answer all your questions. You're my friends now, we're having soft tacos later. It's always been wank. Losing someone the way they did is completely heartbreaking. And I actually think it would be more disrespectful to Chester's memory to try and replace him with someone who sounds just like him, because I don't think you could ever replace Chester. He had a once in a lifetime character and he was a once in a lifetime musician. And of course the guys want to continue playing music. They're musicians. And if they want to continue to play music together, that's awesome too. But a new singer and a new sound is probably what's best for them and best for their mental health. 
but I just think Armstrong was just not the right fit. The drummer for Linkin Park already left in 2017 and that was his choice, but now the guitarist has said that he's not going on tour with them. Honestly, this is just no longer Linkin Park and it's just the Mike Shinoda cash grab. And now as a result of all this backlash, Armstrong has threatened to quit Linkin Park. And honestly, I really don't blame her. It must be really hard. She's one of the most controversial people in rock culture right now and all the backlash from fans and media, it must be really hard on her mental health. Well, I guess it's a good thing she doesn't believe in mental health problems. <laughs> I honestly don't know what she expected. The limelight is a scary place to be, especially for someone who victim blamed a woman for being raped. But in conclusion, if they decide to stick with Armstrong, I think the best possible approach is to maybe change the name of the band because a lot of fans are voicing that Chester and Linkin Park are synonymous with each other. So it might be the best option for the band in this new chapter in their career. Also, there's only like Mike and Brad there of the original seven. So is it even Linkin Park anymore anyway? But what do you think? Please tell me in the comment section. I'll get back to as many of you as possible. And please don't forget to drop a like. And if you did like this video, please check out my Dave Grohl video that I also finished recently too. I hope everyone here has a great day and hopefully see you soon.